In this video, we're going to continue our discussion on PID control. Specifically, we'll talk about how to auto-tune the PID control in Connected Components Workbench. We'll be using the user-defined function block called Rapid Auto-Tune, and we'll get that from Rockwell Automation's sample code library. I've set up in Factory I.O. this tank filling station. It includes this analog fill valve that needs a 0 to 10 volt DC signal. It also includes this level sensor, which transmits a 0 to 10 volt DC signal, which we'll need to scale to represent the level in the tank between 0 and 100% full. It also includes this discharge valve, and I've set this to always be draining. So you can imagine that this is just a manual valve that someone has opened to always be draining the tank. This is the control panel that I've set up. You'll notice that it has a start button, and you'll need to program this so that the green light is on when the machine is in run mode. It also has a stop button. And the red light should be on when the machine is in off mode. This digital display should show the level of fluid in the tank between 0 and 100% full. This digital display should show the desired set point or the desired fill level for the tank. You should program your PLC so that this dial adjusts the fill level. This is a 0 to 10 volt DC dial and the input from that should be scaled to a 0 to 100% full set point. These displays down here should show the gain values. This one should show the proportional gain used in the PID control. This one should show the time integral, and this one should show the time derivative. And because we're going to use auto-tuning, we should set these gains so that at the beginning they're just set to 1 for the proportional time integral and time derivative gains. And then auto-tune will reset those to some more appropriate values. This is the filter constant, which is also part of the gains and the initial value here should be just zero and then the auto-tune should adjust that as well. This button right here should begin the auto-tune procedure and when the auto-tune procedure is done this auto-tune light should be turned on indicating that the auto-tune procedure is finished and then these gain values should be transferred from the auto-tune into the PID instruction. Let me show you how to get that user-defined function block from Rockwell Automation that can do the auto-tuning for us. I'm just going to do a Google search for Rockwell Automation Sample Code Library. Here it is right here. This is the main page where I can search for sample code that's in the Rockwell Automation Library. Here I'm going to search for RA underscore PID underscore auto-tune. Here's where I can download this user-defined function block that will auto-tune my PID controller. Just click download and browse to a location where you want to save this file. Once you've saved the file, you'll notice that it's in a .exe, it's an application. So if you'll double click and run the application, you'll see that all that does is extract two files. One is a zip file and one is the terms and conditions of use, it's a PDF. You'll then have to extract the zip file and you'll see that you'll get two files. One is the RAPID autotune.7z file, which is the user-defined function block. And the other is a Word document containing some information on this user-defined function block. You can then import that user-defined function block into the Connected Components Workbench by right-clicking on your Micro 850 and selecting Import. And you want to import an exchange file. Then you'll be able to browse for that file that you've just downloaded, and you'll be able to import it. Once it's imported, you'll see it show up under user defined function blocks. Here's mine right here. You'll see that I've already placed that in one of my rungs in my ladder diagram. Basically, you place that by dragging an instruction block in, and in your search, just type in the RA, and it'll find that user defined function block that you've just imported. Before I explain the auto tuning function that you've just downloaded, Let's review the regular PID instruction in Connected Components Workbench. Here's the instruction that would be used in a ladder diagram. You'll notice it has an input for a process variable. That's the measured value from our process that we're trying to control. In our case, it's the level of the tank. It also has an input for the set point. This is the desired level for that process variable. In our case, it's the desired level in the tank. It also has an input where we can specify whether this PID controller is in automatic or manual mode. And if it's in automatic mode, this control variable will be calculated automatically based on the process variable, the set point, and the gains. The control variable needs to have some bounds set, a maximum and minimum value. And because we're going to be using this PID in conjunction with the auto-tuning instruction that you just downloaded, we need to make sure that this maximum CV output is 100, meaning 100%. 
That's what the auto-tuning instruction would need. And the minimum control variable value should be set to zero. These gains are the proportional integral and derivative gains, and we'll just set the initial values to one for proportional, one for integral, one for derivative, and zero for the filter gain. And then we'll have to change those values based on the output of our auto-tuning instruction. This control input, if you remember from the last video, is where we indicate whether this PID is a direct acting or a reverse acting controller. If you recall, a reverse acting controller is one where if we have a positive error, meaning our current tank value is higher than our set point, and that positive error should result in a reduced value for our control variable, meaning let's close off the fill valve a little so our tank level can come back down. That is a reverse acting controller, so we'd need to set this one to false in our case. If we set this auto or manual mode to false, that would put this PID controller in manual mode. And that's what we need to do if we want this auto-tuning instruction to take over. The auto-tuning instruction has an input for the process variable and the set point. And if we set this auto-tuning mode to true, then this auto-tuning sequence will begin. And that auto-tuning sequence will calculate its own control variable. And that control variable will need to be passed into this control variable manual input in our PID. Because when this PID is in manual mode, that manual control variable is what gets passed to this CV output, which actually controls the process. So basically, if we put the PID in manual mode and the auto-tuning instruction in auto-tune, then the CV from the auto-tuning instruction is what's actually controlling our process. And you'll see that the auto-tuning will increase the level of the tank and decrease the level of the tank to get a feel for the oscillations. And once the auto-tuning has finished its procedure, this done bit will become true. And this result output will have our calculated gains. If we then pass these gains into the gains for our PID controller, and then turn this PID controller to true or automatic mode, then our PID controller will be controlling our process automatically using these new gains. Let's go ahead and run a simulation to see how this system works. You'll notice right now that it's not in run mode. The red light's on. If I hit the start button, I'm now in run mode, but nothing's happening because my set point is zero and my current level in my tank is also zero. If I increase my set point to, let's say, 23%, the PID instruction is now controlling the filling of this tank using these initial values for the gains, one for proportional, one for time integral, one for time derivative, and zero for the filter constant you'll see that it's actually overshooting the value by quite a bit before it shuts down that fill valve and allows the tank to begin to drain again. You'll also notice as this tank drains that the PID controller won't open up that fill valve until it's undershot this, this set point. Now it's starting to fill again. You can see it's gradually try, starting to trickle, trying to fill to match this set point again. If I now push my auto-tuning sequence now the auto-tuning sequence begins, and now it's that auto-tuning instruction that's taken over, and you can see that it fills and lets drain, and then fills again to try and get a feel for the oscillations in my control response. Once it's got a good enough feel for the oscillations in this control response, it will then automatically calculate gains for me and turn on this done light. Once that done light is turned on, I've created a program that automatically takes these new gains and pass them into the PID controller and then turn the PID controller to true so that the PID controller is now controlling my process based on these new gains. You can see that it's holding it pretty steady at 23% full, which is my set point. If I increase my set point a little bit more to 33%, you'll notice that it hurriedly increases the level in the tank and only overshoots it a little bit before it tapers off the fill valve and allows it to come back to the set point. And then it holds it at that set point at 33%. If I turn the set point down again to about 22%, you'll see that it allows this tank to drain and then gradually opens up that fill valve to try and hold it at the set point again, right at 22. So these are some pretty good values for the gains in my PID controller, and they were determined by the auto-tuning instruction that we got from the sample library from Rockwell Automation.